Let's go. Okay, so we're here with Justin Blair um, on this is, I'm going to call it, I guess, the COVID version of, of talking shit with Beecher. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, Appropriately socially distanced. Man, it's so crazy. This stuff is insane, you know? And it, it, it's going to be hard to have a whole uh, podcast of us talking without talking about it, you know? Because we could talk about mm. the whole hour or whatever we're going to do. Um, but for those of you who don't know who Justin is, Justin, what do you do? Explain it to us. What do you do? Uh, I uh, am the founder of the Church Street Boxing Gym uh, and uh, founded that in 97, sold it in 2014. Simultaneously uh, ran uh, uh, Friday Night Fights, which is the longest running uh, promotion in the United States, uh, and also uh, started the Henemo Group in 2018, and we procure and produce uh, niche sports, uh, primarily in Asia. And uh, as far as I was going to ask you about right all now, this stuff, I was going to ask you about all of it. Um, so you used to own Church Street Boxing? I founded it in 1997. It was it was an old squash club. Man, where where was that at? Uh, it's still there. It's on uh, Park Place in Lower Manhattan by City Hall. Man, and, uh, I, I think I might have fought in there one time. Me probably. and Primo may have fought in there one time. God, that was a long time ago. I don't remember. But, yeah. So so you own that gym. Did you teach, too? Uh, I was not a coach. Uh, um, it was never really my passion to be a coach. Um, so did you box then? I did. I boxed in, in high school and in college. Muay Thai? Uh, I never did Muay Thai. I always discovered Muay Thai. Uh, kind of after I was, after I finished boxing, I didn't had never even heard of it. Oh right yeah, when I was boxing, so yeah, it was quite new to me. So Church Street was just a boxing gym. Uh, it was a boxing gym. Uh, I'd started that after I had finished boxing, and so by the time I had started Church Street, I had heard of Muay Thai um, at that point, and then uh, we did have some Muay Thai, and eventually uh, had a lot of you know well-known people in the community come through as coaches, Chris Romulo, Chris Kwiatowski, Jason Strout. Man, um, I know all those so, guys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've been lucky to have uh, some of the some of the top guys in the field. Uh, so so uh, you sold it, you said it went 2014? I sold it in 2014. And so I ran it for 17 years. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I know the stresses of it. I'm sitting in my gym right now, if you guys can't tell. Uh, but... Um, Why'd you sell it? Um, that's a good question. Uh, why did we sell it? Um, my, it was just wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't something that really excited me. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, I think a, a something I had heard was that a, a big problem for small businesses, small business people, family-owned businesses, is kind of an inability to change. And Church Street to change in what uh, in what um, in what capacity and what a aspect did you want it to change? Well, I think uh, Church Street. I ran it for seventeen years. I'd probably say financially, I had maybe five that would be considered decent. Uh, more often than not, it was just the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze. It just wasn't uh, you know running a gym uh, wasn't my passion. I think the fact that I wasn't a coach probably. Um, you know, was maybe part of the reason why I may have not found as much enjoyment as maybe a lot of other people who who do own who do own gyms. You know, I, I can say I've met a handful of people who uh, have done very well with gyms, and those are people who are passionate about teaching and coaching and have uh, you, know, you know are are successful in that uh, realm of the business, and then also kind of can see the whole field and, and run it like a business and balance that. Um, balance those two because it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to balance. And absolutely you know, not. You, you, met, you mentioned COVID and uh, what's going on right now. And as a gym owner, a former gym owner, I can really identify with a lot of the pain that you and a lot of other people in this field are kind of experiencing. Um, you know, being, it's uh, it's going to be tough. Um, I just made a, a big business decision too, so it's going to be. It's going to be hard because this is how I explain it to people. The first thing that you can give up, you don't need to come train 
I mean, you want to, and it's good for you, but it's something like I need food, I need lights, I need housing. I don't need to go train, mm-hmm. you know? So that's one of the first things to give up. Um, hopefully it doesn't get into that to where if we're closed for three months, man, it's going to be, it's going to be something, you know, it's going to be starting over. Hopefully not, but. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that maybe, you know, I mean, it's anecdotal, but it may be of, of interest is, you know, our, our gym was a block from uh, ground zero. We were technically in the, the red zone wow. and we were closed for, six or eight weeks uh, after 9-11 because uh, the Twin Towers were just so close. And when they finally opened it up, uh, the next day we were we were jammed. Uh, so I, I hear what you're saying as far as, uh, you know, maybe it's not your rent or your mortgage, uh, your kid's tuition or your education, but to people who train, it's a really important facet of their life. And I do think it's probably higher on people's priority list that, you know, when you're in your position and your gym's right. closed and you're worried about what's going to happen, I get it. But having the benefit of hindsight and just being someone who's into fitness myself, I I, I believe that most people, when this is all over, uh, for me, the fear uh, for my friends who own gyms isn't that people are are not going to prioritize it. My con- just my concern is just the general you know, health risk and the social distancing and, you know, yeah. things are close quarters. And so, uh, you know, people may be spooked for a little bit, why, you know, for a little while. Uh, so that, that to me is a little bit more of a concern, but I don't, I'm not, I don't worry about the financial uh, picture so much because, you know, there were times that the gym uh, did well in time uh, that where the economy uh, indicated that it shouldn't be. So, Hey, man, uh, I'm glad you said that. (laughs) I needed that little boost of confidence there, you know? Um, Yeah, it's this is a crazy time. It's a crazy time. And it's not just for us gym owners. uh, Not um, it's for everyone. You know, I mean, I read a story about a guy who got laid off after 18 years and his boss was like, look, man, it's I don't want to lay you guys off. I I can't stay open. Mm -hmm. So it's it wasn't like you know, like, like he was just laying people off. It was people that he, he needed, but at this time, in, at this time with all this crazy stuff happening in the whole earth, um, he had to lay him off. So it's a scary time, you know? Yeah. I mean, and that's somebody who's, who's had employees and you know, contract workers for, for years. It's, you know, that's something that never gets easy. And that's not something that I think most people take lightly. It's easy. You know, you've got your boss and then you've got the, you know, people, who maybe aren't the boss or workers and to kind of have this, you know, sense that you know, the business owner is a bit callous, but they're just, they're forced to make the hard decisions. And, uh, it's not a, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, I will say, you know, um, without getting political, I, I do think that, um, at least in the short term, I do think our government is going to, you know, this, this bill that they just passed, uh, my sense is that they got small businesses in mind, and having so. Been so what bill is that? Nine eleven. Well, they just they just passed this uh, two point two trillion dollar uh, bill uh, through Congress on Friday, um, which in, has provisions for small businesses. With you know, they haven't released the details, but they're talking about forgivable loans, uh, where you know, and don't quote me on this. But something along the lines of <coughs> a small business could get a Don't loan cough, man. you keep your employees on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm good. Um, uh, or if I have it, it's mild symptoms. I don't know. No, I don't think I have it. Um, so um, I do think there is some hope for small businesses. Um, from my experience in 9-11, you know, there was, there was assistance available. You had to be aggressive. You had to be on top of it. You had to get after it. You know, nobody showed up at your door with a check, but right. there is assistance out there. And, and I do believe wholeheartedly, at least in the short term, uh, that there'll be, that there will be help, uh, to some degree, you know, it may not fill the entire, uh, right. entire gap, but I, I don't think that everybody's kind of left on their own as much as it may feel like that right now. We can, we can hope not, you know, um, you know how you said you don't think you have it. And truthfully, um, 
to be honest, I think I had it um, probably mm. a couple of weeks ago. I was talking to, uh, uh, chatting with a doctor online, and I, I, I had every symptom. I had the, the, um, the cough. I couldn't breathe. I had 104 fever for two days. And then uh, when the fever broke, I mean, it, I mean, it was horrible. I couldn't reach down and, and put socks on because my body hurt so bad. And, and I'm in, I'm in okay shape, you know? Um, and then, uh, luckily they said ibuprofen messes it up. So I was drinking NyQuil. NyQuil has, uh, uh, acetaminophen in it, so it doesn't have ibuprofen. Mm. So from, from all the reading and all, they said that ibuprofen makes it worse. So I'm glad I did acetaminophen. And then a couple of days later I had a dry cough for about a week and then it started to go away. And they said that could be it. And then he said this, you should go get tested. And I told him, so you want me to go to the place where everyone who thinks they have it is congregating? I was like, now nah, pass. <laughs> I feel better now. No way. You know, <laughs> I have a doctor friend. I have a doctor friend of mine who has a few, uh, a few tests and he, he offered to me to come down and, and, uh, and get tested. And I said, I'll come down, but you're going to meet me in the parking lot. I'm not going in your office. So absolutely. Absolutely. No way. So, so, um, you were talking about Friday night fights being the longest running show in the USA and, and I, man, as far as I can remember back when, when I lived in Las Vegas and, and we were, we were, I was still fighting you, you guys were still, you guys are, were having shows back then. How long have you guys been running? Mm. Started in 97 in the basement space at church street boxing gym. Yeah. That's when I started doing all martial arts. I think 97. <laughs> wow. Awesome. And yeah. um, you guys are on Fight Pass. Are you still on Fight Pass? Uh, uh, right now, uh, we're, ta- we're taking a break on Fight Pass. Yeah. Uh, and exploring some other opportunities. Um, again, obviously, the whole world has had to tap the brakes right yeah. now. But, you know, I'm still optimistic for the second half of 2020. Okay. So um, so you're looking for other opportunities. Uh, do you have some? Do you have some lined up? Because th- this is what we always complain about. And I was a West Coast guy. You guys are East Coast guys. We always complain that, well, we can't watch the fucking fights, man. What the hell, you know? And, and we always were like, Justin needs to put that shit online or, or, or like a, 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 a stream or something. Because we, we, we love the fights too, you know? And plus, yeah. we, were, we were competing, so we wanted to see the guys so we could pick them apart and things like that, mm. you know? <laughs> so do you have something lined up like a stream that you can pay for or... Or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think the, you know, the, the fortunate uh, thing of what's happening today in sports with so many different digital channels and outlets is that demand is much higher for sport. Niche sports is, you know, no longer a, a four-letter word. Um, uh, so I you're you're calling hard. Muay Thai a niche sport? I would I would certainly call it a niche sport. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, le- like a niche is like something that's not as big as, let's say, football. Yeah, yeah. Right? Pre- precisely. There's a, there's a, there's a spectrum, you know. There's a pecking order, and and as much as we'd like, as much as we we're passionate about our sport, we have to be realistic about where it lies in that pecking order. Oh, it's and, true. Um, but 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 to my point is, I don't necessarily think that's that's not as much of a disadvantage now as it was maybe five or ten years ago. Absolutely. And, and and it's because of guys like you that, that are consistently putting on good shows and good matchups as well. Not not letting people run over people like they, they're good matchups, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and. Well, like I said, are, do you have something lined up so we could watch the fights whenever you can put, start putting them back on? You ain't going to get away from uh, that question, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't I can't I can't pass. Um, I think again. I think we'll have to we'll have to see. We've got a couple of interesting conversations uh, going on with places that you probably wouldn't ordinarily expect to see a sport like this. So I oh can't, wow! I can't I can't tip my hand too quickly. Yeah. Um, you can feel free to ask it again, but I think that's as much yeah. as I can give you. He, right now. He's he's giving me the fucking political answer, you know, to where he gives you an answer, but it's not really the answer. But I'm sorry, I, I, man, I, hey, well, at least at least you know you have something going on. Like I said. I'm a fan. I'm a Muay Thai fan. The only way that this stuff is going to get bigger is if we keep pushing it not only in our city but everywhere else, you know? 
So that's that's, that's why that's I want I and plus I like I love Friday night fights. I love going when I go. My, my guy fights for you and 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 I like I like watching them. It's great, you know. Uh, I appreciate that. Well, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's the coaches. It's their passion that kind of drives this thing. Uh, yeah, you know, they're the ones who are putting in the real hours. Yeah, for uh, sure. You, know, you guys have to, you guys have to, you know, train your your paying customers and fighters. If you look at the, if you value your time uh, over the course of say a week and how much revenue comes in uh, and how many hours you spend a week with a given fighter or or your fight team. It ends up being a major investment for a coach more than anybody. For they, sure. You know, you're paying for the rent, you're paying for the lights, you're paying for somebody else to coach your class that you could be teaching, but instead you're teaching these guys or you're or you're doing it on your off hours or you know, when you could be doing something else. But whatever, it ends up being the coaches that, that make a pretty major contribution to Man, to, uh, you're the you're the only one who knows. Preach, man. Tell <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I know, but I mean, you, you got to do what you love. I love it. Uh, I, not to say I love getting kicked by people all day, but I, I do love it when 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 my guys show that improvement that we did work on, and it helps them to get better and win fights. You know, uh, that that's that makes it worth it. You know. Mm-hmm. So, what's this Henemo Group? Uh, Animal Group's a company we started in 2018. That's and, your company? Uh, we, sorry? That's your company? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, um, okay. It's uh, another company separate and apart from Friday Night Fights. And uh, we uh, focus on uh, niche sports in Asia. So we've done deals with Mongolian uh, National Wrestling Federation, uh, and a number of other countries and leagues and stadiums in Southeast Asia. Uh, the two big ones are Lumpani. Are you broadcasting this stuff? So Lumpani and Rajadam Nern are on uh, Fight Pass. That, that's um, on um, Absolute Muay Thai. I was going to get to that too. Yeah, I know so, about Absolute Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about, you got Mongolian yeah. wrestling. Are you broadcasting that? Not yet, no. i got to find a home for it. I've, I've heard of it because, you know, I, I also do jujitsu. Don't tell anybody. But um, uh, but I've never seen it. You know, I've never seen a, a Mongolian wrestling match. I've seen photos of them them like wrestling on dirt, crazy. So, mm. but yeah, are you planning it's, on broadcasting uh, it? Uh, I mean, if we can find a home for it, it's it's a little slower. It'd probably do better as a highlight show. Um, it's very similar sure. to sumo. It's even longer. A match could actually take thirty minutes. Uh, and there's a and, and in that 30 minutes there'd be about 29 minutes and 40 seconds of not much and then but when it's but, but when it happens it's like you know these guys are, are monsters um, I can send you a, a, a photo we um, we were in Mongolia and uh, I brought my son with me uh, who's, uh, who's 10 and um, we went to the main city to do our business. And then once I knew we were going, uh, I typed in, you know, most remote place in Mongolia, <laughs> this little town in the Western, uh, corner of Mongolia. And so we, we fly there and, uh, we get out, out of the plane and into this big vehicle. It looks like it, it could drive. It's slow as hell, ugly as hell. and doesn't care what you think. But it'll get you wherever <laughs> you want to go. And it goes for, and we drive for about eight hours. And we get uh, to this tiny uh, eagle hunter's camp. And he says to us, he goes, I was invited to a Kazakh wedding. You should come uh, with me as my guest. So we say, sure. We're at this Kazakh wedding uh, uh, in, the, in the mountains of Mongolia. No roads, no nothing. I don't know how they organized it because there's no cell wow. service. There's no address. So I don't know how you tell everybody to be somewhere that you can't identify. But sure enough, they did. And what do they do at a Kazakh wedding? They sing, they eat, they dance, and they wrestle. What? And they brought in, and they wrestle. And so two guys could be sitting there talking, having a chat, and then they could just say, "Hey, Mark, what do you what do you, you want to let, let's wrestle?" So uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> and they wrestle. They wrestle where on the dirt? Yeah, on the, just right on the ground on the dirt. What? Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, so funny story is, uh, you know, 
my son is uh, some other kids. You know, my son's 10 years old, um, kind of average build. And a 13 year old kid comes up to him and says something to him in Mongolian and somebody half translates saying he wants to wrestle. <laughs> well, I look around and, uh, you know, here that'd be called bullying, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah. So he looks at me, I look around and it's, there's a lot of testosterone there. And I look down at him and I said, it looks like you're going to wrestle. So no. He says, okay. <laughs> so he says, okay. And I said, what? Um, I said, well, he'd done it for a few years. Awesome. So he gets better. He gets better. So he'd done it for a few years. So I said, look, um, you remember the double leg takedown? You shoot the legs, head to the side, grab those legs, drive. He's Absolutely. Like, I got it. So they start, they start wrestling. He shoots the legs, takes the kid down. Boom. Kid's not happy about it at all. Oh, for so sure. So they say, this little, this little white kid's just showing him up. <laughs> so they start wrestling again. And now this kid's not happy. He picks up my son, Henry. Throws him on the ground hard, and they're about thirty feet away. <clears throat> so, do they have points in that? So, is there points like that's two points for one takedown, and then the other guy got no, two uh, points for a uh, takedown? But if, uh, if any if any part of your body aside from your foot touches the ground, it's uh, you're over. So, it's, I think it's kind of like Greco Roman. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. So, kid throws Henry down, and pretty hard. Okay. And the uh, the Mongolian kid starts to walk away, chest. Fucked up. He's really proud. Right. And and Henry pops up and he's got that Bruce Banner look right before he turns on the Hulk. <laughs> and he's too far away, and he's too far away for me to do anything. And he gets up and he runs and he hits the kid from behind. Two full football tackle. They both go down. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like we are done. We're I'm looking, dead. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at the guy's dad. I'm like, he's gonna hit my son. I'm gonna hit him. Yeah. Gonna hit me. We're done. I'm yep. checking my phone quickly. Is there any signal? <laughs> down the line? I'm going, what, hell, what am I even going to tell? So sure enough, uh, the kid gets up. My son gets up. They look at the kid. They look at my son. Expressionless. They look at me. And then they give me the big thumbs up. Like, all right, this kid's got some. This kid's got oh, some. Oh, wow. So go, wow. Thank God. I grab the hand. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That's an awesome story, man. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> You know, the funniest thing is, so while we're there, I meet, uh, they bring in this Mongolian wrestling troupe. So regulars are wrestling each other, and then they've got this troupe uh, of, of kind of guys, this is what they do. And one of them is the state champion. And uh, I met the guy, and, and a very nice guy, uh, and he's about 6'5", 245, 250. Dang. He back squats something like... I think 500 pounds. He bench presses like 300 and something pounds or 400 pounds. He's just a monster. Maybe he's got like 6% body fat. He's just Damn. a savage. So I'm very, like, I'm, uh, yeah, so I go back to the main city to do my business and I'm talking with these guys who are the heads of the Mongolian National Wrestling Federation. And I, I kind of almost brag, like, oh, I know, I can't even pronounce his name, Berkush. <laughs> right. You know, he's a pretty good guy. And, they, and they're very polite. They're like, yay. Hey, He's okay. I'm like, what do you mean he's okay? What? So, uh, so after some prodding, they're like, yeah, he's kind of like, you know, like, I guess he put him like a third stringer. You know, it's just not. Really? You're not your top guy. So I was very impressed uh, that this guy was such a savage and that they just thought of him as. It's like a third a string guy, like, yeah, like yeah, class D never, wrestler. Yeah, he's okay. He's all right. <laughs> That's so, crazy, um, man. So. Mongolian, Mongolian wrestling, and they wrestle at weddings. And you guys went. Hold on, let me get this straight here. You guys went to a a remote city to go check it out. I do that too when I go out of the country. And then you went to a wedding, and someone asked your son to wrestle, and he was like, "Okay," and he did it. Yeah, yeah, That's he, like a movie. Dude. You know, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty wild. Uh, I could probably send you a couple of videos or something you could throw in here. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, he he, was, he he rolls with it. So yeah, he's been with me over there a few times. So. Wait, wait, wait! You have video of your son wrestling him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, you gotta send. I'll I'll clip it in. I'll clip it into the uh, into you. this thing I'll, I'll get, if you I'll send get you it. Some pictures. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna ask you, but you know, in the heat of the moment, when somebody's wrestling, a lot of times, like I bring my cameras when my guys fight all the time, and I don't think I think I have two videos because I don't I, I'm. I don't remember. I'm stressed. You know, I'm like, I got, we got to yeah, do this. Sure. 
So, but I was going to ask you, but yeah, you have video. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I'd love yeah. to, I'd love to see that. And, yeah, uh, yeah. wow. Okay. Let, let, let's get back to, uh, get back to some stuff I was, I was going to ask you about. Absolute Muay Thai. Absolute Muay Thai. Um, uh, my brother was a, a commentator for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. and they they do Raja Damnar and Lumpini and, mm-hmm. um, it's still going on. Jason Stroud is out there. Am I right? You're right. Uh, it's still going. You're right that Jason shots out there, and it's going on. We, I think, our last show is the tenth of March, and then right after that, they tap the brakes on uh, on Thai boxing at a stadium. So yeah, you know, for sure. Just like every other sport in the world, we've had to uh, pause temporarily. Is Jason still out there? But, um, he is. He's still out there now. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, how do we how do we watch this, man? Uh, well, the absolute Muay Thai uh, is all those are available on Fight Pass, and you can still see the archive. Nice. You, know, you can still see the stuff on Fight Pass. Um, nice. So all we've got something like almost seventy episodes uh, that we broadcast from Thailand that's available on there. I have yeah, I so. I've seen it, but I haven't seen seventy episodes. But I've seen a lot of them, of course. It's there. It's there. Yeah, we're for. We're the first get people I, I believe to be broadcasting live in English. Uh, and really? The graphics. So yeah, I, I, I could be wrong, but I, from what I understand, and what, what my research tells me is we're, we're the first ones. Uh, to awesome. That. So you're bringing the sport true. up. Yeah, that's great. I, I know that you're you're probably the first one to have a Muay Thai show from Thailand on Fight Pass for sure. Mm. For sure, because mm. I mean I don't have Fight Pass, I don't have TV, but. But I, I watch it, you know, when there's fights I want to see. Um, sure. So th- that's an ongoing thing with Fight Pass. And after this uh, Corona stuff is over, which is hopefully soon, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on, right? Uh, that's our hope, yeah. That's our hope. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. And, Just like you, we're all, we're all in, a, you know, in a position of a little bit of uncertainty these days. Yeah, how how is Jason doing it in Thailand? Is he? Uh, did they lock them up there too? And, and I mean, you're in a different country. Wow, I, mean, uh, he, I couldn't imagine. He, I actually think uh, it's doing. I think they're probably a little better off over there than we are here. You know, I uh, I've been following this since uh, probably January because of our business over there in Thailand. At at the very beginning of this was the worst uh, or had the highest rate of infection outside of china okay um, very early on and, and then and then it didn't take long for it to be eclipsed by south korea and japan and now it's um and now uh, and it remained quite low um uh, and even back in january i was concerned i thought that the u.s could be could have a, a real problem um and thailand was spared in the beginning but now their cases are growing as well so uh, I do think um, that we've obviously we're bearing the brunt of it. Yeah, but, you uh, know, but but here's here's another fact that's going to come up soon. It, it's March twenty eighth uh, uh, today. Um, it, it the the numbers are about to spike upwards, mm-hmm. and the reason the numbers are about to spike upwards because now they have a test for it, so they started testing everybody. So that the, the number of cases may not have went up. But it's going to freak people out when those numbers spike about how many people have it now. And not only is that going to freak people out, the media is going to, of course, hype it up worse than it is. Or they're going to say whatever they want you to think. But it's going to spike because of the tests. It's going to. Well, I mean, I guess I have a, I may have a bias being in New York. I, I, I do I agree with you. I think you're half. I think that's 50 percent of the answer. That there okay. are more tests, and so obviously, with more testing, you're going to get more positives. I also do believe that um, it is, it is, you know, it's highly, you know, way more contagious. And I think that, you know, that, that the fact that it's kind of been said compared to the flu, I, I don't, you know, from what I'm seeing and reading, uh, you know, medical journals, not just sensationalized media. <laughs> Absolutely. I do believe. I do believe uh, that the people who know will, you know, are saying that this is considerably more uh, aggressive, you know, as far as how it's transmitted 
And I think the fact that people can, I, I think that people can walk around and not feel sick is really, uh, you know, pretty scary and it's going to feed into that. So I, I, I think yeah. you will see more people because of the testing. Um, but I do think you're going to also see more people because it, it is spreading. And I think, you know, up until, you know, a week or so ago, people, you know, people were going to the gym, people were living their life, people were going to sporting events. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's how it's transmitted. So I, I, I do think you're going to see a spike because more people genuinely have it, you know, in two weeks than have it now, testing or test or not. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, already in, in New York, we're, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're seeing it firsthand. Yeah. I mean, it, it's such New York City. Uh, he's in New York City, if you guys don't know, in the city. It is such a small, it's a very small area with, super a lot of people in that packed in that small area so it's it's really hard to like i live in texas i mean 20 it's it's an hour at 70 miles an hour to get to my mother's house and we live in the same city Mm -hmm. so so it's 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 different it's a different thing man it's hard to not be around people in that city isn't it yeah it is i'm lucky now and i'm from the city but now i live about 100 miles east so I'm oh. I'm in a kind of a rural area, so I'm I'm able nice. to. But even in, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, a few weeks ago we had we had an event February 28th, uh, and then I was in the city uh, a little bit. I think the following week, and uh, I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, I think maybe the U.S. and maybe we got it under control and maybe it'll be okay. And then I went back in the city and I got on a subway and I said, hmm, this is going to be a problem. Yeah, the subway was full. It's just full and just, you know, just looking at the reality, you know, people are touching the hands and we all know, you know, we yep. learned the hard way they were touching our faces way more than we probably are aware of. And so, yep. you know, this is, this is where it lives. So I'm, I'm probably a little more, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, from where you were at, as far as my opinion about kind of, uh, the, the, the you know, kind of what's. Well, I, I hope to, I hope to promote that we have hope that, that they're going to, we're going to figure this out and it's going to, it's going to go away because I mean, if it doesn't, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter that I think will happen, it's not a fact. What I think will happen is once uh, so many people are out of work for so long, you don't have food and water. You know what happens next? Crime. Mm. So that's Mm -hmm. what happens next, you know? And, and man it, it can't get to that it would be bad it would be really bad yeah i mean i i, I think uh i think we see how bad it gets and then and then kind of society's going to make a decision on whether or not it's, it's the risk is worth it and we all get back to work or we hunker down and yeah, it's, uh, it's it's you know i think in a way we're we're kind of we're pretty lucky to not have experienced anything any great Damn, I lost you. They kind of been on other people's shores for the most part. So, you know, we didn't have it. We didn't have a depression. We didn't have a flu in 1918. You know, we haven't experienced that. But humanity survives. We'll we'll figure it out one way or the other. It might might be some pain points that we're not ready for. We haven't experienced, but we'll move on. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. And I like that outlook, you know. Um. I hope that this doesn't turn into depression because that would be that would be really terrible. But um, that's that's the outlook that I that I like. You know, we'll, we will get through it, and we will. But I think that instead of people arguing as, with everybody, we need to help people. I sent an email to my whole list. I have three thousand people on my list that have trained with me or whatever, and I said, "Look, if you live around me and you need help with something, I'm not kidding. Call me. Like, here's my yeah. number. Call me." You call me, I'll go over there right now. Unless you're coughing. If you're coughing, I'm not coming over. Look <laughs> <laughs> your driveway. Get your driveway. That's as close as I'll get. Yeah, you know, I mean, but I'll help people. If they need something and, and I can do it, I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'll help them. I'll help whoever. I don't care, you know, and yeah, I think that's I, how everyone uh, needs to be. Yeah, I think I think that is certainly a, a silver lining that, uh, you know, we're all seeing that. We're all doing it. We've got old neighbors that we're, you know, if I, if I go to the store, if I brave, you know, get work up enough courage to, to dive headlong into the supermarket and definitely call a few of the elderly people that I know nearby nice. and say, what do you need? And drop it off at the doorstep and tell them to wipe it off before they take it in their house and all that. So awesome, I think we're seeing man. a lot of that. So 
uh, that's certainly, um, you know, it's an unfortunate way to be reminded, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you wear a mask when you go out? I have to say I don't. I you don't? Uh, we, we don't, you know what? I just got some the other day. Um, Hey man, were you ever a kid? Did you ever tie the shirt around your face like a ninja and put the put the hole in your, on your eyes like a ninja? I will do that yeah, you and, know what? and put pull the pull the top back, you know, and then I'll have a mask. I mean, exactly. You got to if you got to go out, you got to have a mask, you know. You're right. Yeah. Are you wearing a mask when you go out? I do. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I have I have prepped meals. Uh, a, a lady brings me prepped meals that I, I pay for, obviously. And I haven't been out at all. I've been I've been here and, and to the house, and that's it. You know, so I haven't been anywhere. So how many days has it been since you've been in like a, we'll say a commercial establishment, whether it be a supermarket or something like that? Almost two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm impressed. Pretty much out of my head in here. You know, I I, I can't do anything. You know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love Muay Thai, but I don't want to hit the bag. I want to hit somebody, but we don't want to do that, you know? So, so man, I don't know. So, so, what's your, so what's your average day consist of uh, in quarantine? Man, I, I get up and I mess with the internet too much, and then I, I play bass, you know? So I learn some slap bass, and then I, I mean, I, I come to the gym um, because no one's here, so I come to the gym, clean the gym. It's already clean, and then... I set up for this podcast. That's about it, man. I don't do anything. It's so boring, man. It's like, well, I have so much stuff. All these little errands I have to do. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's done. One day, it's done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. My base, my, my basement's immaculate. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing else to do, I, and it's only been, you know, I mean, I've been two weeks, but it's only been really a week since uh, in Houston they mandated that 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 we, we can't be open, you know, um, mm -hmm. last week it was five people or less or, or yeah. And, and then I just, I, they said no. And I just cut it off, you know, right. I don't want to be the reason somebody got sick, you know? Mm. So, but I'm going to tell you though, uh, I, I spend a lot of the day at the gym and there's a bar right next door and they deliver food. So they're still open. Um, nobody goes in there, but people walk in and out to pick up their food and I asked a bunch of people one day I said I'm going to do a, like a little poll and see have you been to the grocery store and uh, about 90% of them said yes and I go how many people were in there and they were like it was fucking packed and I'm like that you that that's that like you're you're closing all the businesses and telling nobody to go around each other but everyone goes to the grocery store and they're touching things and doing you know it's like yeah, I read it. I read an interesting article about like the grocery store. You know, one of the things about the grocery store that's kind of nice is it's it's the closest. It's when you're in there, fear aside, it's kind of the closest thing to normal life. Ah, that, oh, that's that, true. That you can do. So you know, I didn't realize it until after I read that. I'm like, I gotta probably admit this. Probably that's true. One of the driving factors that I'm not aware of probably why I'm willing to to go in there. Um, uh, you know, when I, I could probably could, you know, push that out or be more, man, I never thought about it that way, but maybe people, people go there because it does feel normal. Not like it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I'm not saying it's excusable. I'm just now. Yeah. Maybe that, that might be the, you know, the driving factor. I mean, I, you know, we're, we're lucky. I, you know, I live, we live in the country, so I can kind of walk outside the, the house and yeah. jog and, and be very far away from people. But, you know, if you don't, if you're, if you're right on top of your neighbor or if you're in an apartment. Yeah. And that's why I come to the gym. There's nobody, nobody's at the gym. No businesses are open and there's nobody around, you know, and eh, I'm staying to myself. It's, it's, it's this crazy time, but, but let me change this subject again. Like I said, we could talk about this for hours. It's, it's a crazy thing that in the bottom line is nobody really knows what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. But I heard that you do fundraisers as well. Like you do shows like Muay Thai shows that are fundraisers. Is that right? Oh, we've done a few in the past. We've worked with, uh, oh goodness. Uh, we've worked with a few different charities. Um, not How does that work? Uh, I mean, I just, you know, New York City's got a, you know, is a, is, is kind of a hotbed of activity. So uh, I've worked with um, the district attorney of New York. Uh, they're boxing. Um, they do um, 
amateur boxing and the DAs box against each other. And over the years, <laughs> seven or eight years, they, they've raised over a million dollars for veterans. Wow. Uh, uh, for various veterans charities. I've worked with um, uh, Happy Hearts, which is uh, 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 run by uh, Petra Nemkova, who's a, who's a model, uh, I suppose you may have heard of. Um, we worked with her for uh, two or three years. And so it's, in, you know, the odd, probably one or twice, once or twice a year, uh, occasionally we'll, that'll pop up and just because of our experience operating events and running them, uh, you know, when those charities want to look for something a little different. To, that's awesome. To, that is yeah, cool, so, yeah. man. Yeah, we've had some fun experiences there. Yeah, that's really cool. That's another uh, avenue to open up um, the eyes on people watching Muay Thai, you know? Yeah, for, for sure. They had, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Robert Van Roosmolen, or help me out here. That was um, right. That was right. Van Roosmolen. Oh, wow. You're right. Oh, I got it. Um, he fought, uh, I forgot who he fought, an Australian fella, a few years ago. Um, on uh, on uh, one of those shows that we did for Petron and Cover, so it was a pretty high level. Wait, he you know, he, he you had him fight at a at a charity event, one of your charity events. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I can't take full credit for it. Uh, there was obviously some other people involved as well. But, well, right, uh, but I mean, it's your it's your event, and and through your connections, he came and he fought in there. That's that's awesome. Yeah, he. Uh, so yeah, so to have to have people who never probably ever even heard of the sport or known of it. You know, these are you kind know, of high high dollar donors to the charity, and they come sure. and they're buying these tables because of the relationship with the charity, not necessarily because they're fight that. But right. um, kind of being being able to expose them to uh, the sport at kind of that level uh, is pretty cool. So, wow, that yeah. is really cool. That is yeah. really cool. So, uh, so there are pro fighters that do it, and then you have amateur fighters do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had I mean, like all, all sorts from from lawyers in the DA's office all the way up to. I'm not going to try and say his name again because I won't get it. Right <laughs> but, uh, it's Van Roosmullen. Yeah, yeah. But you see, you got it. You got it. All right. That's great, uh, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I can't say I do it as much as I'd like. But, but yeah, we've had some good experience. So you were a boxer. You were in Church Street Boxing. And then now you promote shows, and but you promote Muay Thai shows. Uh, what made you get into Muay Thai instead of like, I know boxing is pretty hard, but instead of like, you know, go with the flow with the MMA that's going on, mm. but you stuck to Muay Thai. You didn't deviate. You kept going with Muay Thai, you know? Yeah. So what made you do that? So um, boxing, so we opened the gym in 97. We started doing boxing shows at the gym in 97. Uh, and we wanted to do something different. Uh, and shortly before I opened the gym, that's maybe the year or two before I opened the gym is when I, kind of got familiar with Muay Thai and I was training in a small boxing gym that had a group of guys that were doing Muay Thai so I started to learn more about it when I opened the gym we had classes there uh, and so we started doing these boxing uh, shows these amateur boxing shows and uh, Edge Brown uh, who uh, is a, from the UK lived in the city was a coach um, when you know on the side from his, his regular job as a banker and he <laughs> had a friendship and uh he knew we were doing these boxing shows and he encouraged me to try the muay thai uh, so we started uh with muay thai and uh, uh, remember that mma became illegal in new york right and right so right was, i forgot so, about that so if you wanted to do something a little different than boxing <clears throat> muay thai was kind of was was, was really it oh so yeah we were, i think we were the first people to be doing uh, muay thai in New York and probably consistently in the United States for you know, several years before it, it, it had grown. For sure. And uh, and I think you know, Muay Thai appealed to kind of a younger, more forward thinking audience than boxing. Uh, yeah. And so it just uh, it just it just kind of took took, a, took on a life of its own. And so you know, we cultivate a relationship with the Tourism Authority of Thailand and some other agencies in Thailand and um, uh, and then. Over time, um, uh, you know, you know, we're able was able to uh, to grow uh, the business uh, there, uh, you know, the relationships there, and, and cultivate relationships in the state. Yeah, you're good. See what happens? Then then they're at home, and people come in, and they fuck up my shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh 
you can edit, edit that out. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. No worries. Sorry about that. My that it's right no here. worries. No worries. You know, um, um, we're all on lockdown, so yeah, it's it's fine. Got plenty of time for post production. Yeah, yeah, I talk a little shit too, but my man, you know. Um, I, as a Muay Thai coach and as someone who just loves Muay Thai, I am glad that, that you stuck with it and you didn't like change the MMA route. Most people do that um, for the money, you know, I mean, the money reasons you're going to go to MMA. That's what most people like, you know, and um, when Lion Fight was first starting, they used to be called Do Battle in the Desert. So I got a bunch of tickets and I gave them away to my students that were uh, jujitsu guys. You know, they weren't like Muay Thai. They're like, no, no, we like MMA. I'm like, just come to the show. So here's tickets. So I got them a bunch of tickets. I gave them away. Man, they ranted and raved. That was the best shit because it was one of the shows where there was a bunch of elbows and blood and cr it was cr mm -hmm. a crazy show. And they were like, that was awesome. There was no stalling, nothing. I mean, like, you can't. We're standing up. You can't stall or move around. Yeah. I think that a lot of MMA guys need to be exposed to it more, and I think they will like it more. I agree. I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like just, it, it's kind of running a spoon right, right off the top and pulling the cream right off the top of it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. It, it really is because there's no, you know, there's no, I mean, you know, and I'm not, it's not a judgment one way or the other against MMA, but, you know, there are times where it slows down. And those are the times where people kind of get up and go to the fridge and get a beer. And I don't yeah. think they're in a stand-up fight, whether that be boxing or Muay Thai, or still Muay Thai, because the higher-level Muay Thai fights are, are still five rounds, so it's more of a sprint than a 10 or 12-round fight. Um, right. I don't think you're going to, if it's a decent fight, you're not getting up and walking away. You're, you're walking no, every second. You don't want to miss it. And, and I try to tell everybody, I'm like, you know, you don't know what a gogo plata is, like a normal person, um, but you know what a punch in the mouth is. Like, you know what it is. You watch it, you're like, oh, that hurt. You know, you know what's happening. Uh, um, so it, it's just strange to me that more people don't get into Muay Thai, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, the problem, I think the challenge is, again, you got, you got baseball, basketball, football, and hockey, and they, tuck, they take up all the air in the room if you, when you're talking about distribution when you're talking about sponsorship for sure you know the, the ufc has achieved a tremendous amount of success but if you compare it to other uh other sports keep in mind that the value of the ufc um is probably the amount of one professional sports team give or take. <laughs> that's crazy so wow you know you know, and now imagine if you had 32 of them, you know, supervised by a league with legacy. Yeah. You've got, uh, you know, basketball is played in every high school. Football is played in every high school. Yeah. Um, uh, baseball is played in every high school. So you have, you know, millions and millions of people that are living it and experiencing it every day. You're right. You're right. You can't, you, you can't got, have you fighting in high school. Fire, you got all that firepower um, of, of 30 some odd NBA teams, you know, I don't know how many baseball teams, 32 football teams. Yeah, that's you know, so, true. That's so, true. So where's where's the room for Muay Thai? You know, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, I go to these conferences and, and, you know, I see the same same people and, you know, you know, the niche sports and, uh, uh, you know, the rugby's and the badminton's and, you know, <laughs> just, uh, these are these are good sports, that, but uh, it's not always it's a little harder for them to kind of find a light of day yeah you're right i never thought about it in, in that context but you're right you know they can play football um the closest they can get is wrestling but you can't fight in high school <laughs> yeah okay we're gonna have fights no no you know we're not <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> exactly right. well um anyways so i'm glad you're in the country and you're not in new york city uh truthfully um uh but w whenever my podcast is over, I have 10 questions that I ask people. I ask everybody the same 10, 10 questions. And, and um, I mean, it, it could still go on for a while. But here's what we're going to do. The first question is, like you, you're a Muay Thai promoter. What's your favorite move in Muay Thai? It doesn't have to be Muay Thai. It could be boxing. It could be, it could be football. I don't care. What's your favorite move? Uh... 
I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing quite like a nice clean uppercut. Yeah, yeah, all right. I like uppercuts too. So you, so you liked Mike Tyson then? Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right, uppercut. I like that too. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, what's your least favorite move? I think any any time when when they're hanging on, whether that be wrestling or MMA or even Muay Thai, you know, you know, hanging on in that clinch, just kind of, you know, as a if I'm watching it for purely entertainment purposes that seems to slow it down a little bit so yeah um i'm not a fan of people who patty cake knee in the clinch and try to get a point a point a point a point and when i'm a judge because i i ref and judge i will mm -hmm. tell everyone i'll say listen those little patty cake knees um they don't count mm -hmm. they have to have power if they hurt and then, then okay okay that's a good knee okay so yeah you're right i don't like that either it's funny. I, I, I got to expand on that before you go to your next question. Um, okay. It's funny, you know, the, the judging uh, sometimes gets criticized. Oh, it's not the same as in Thailand. Well, it's like, you know, we, we go to the stadiums, you know, and we actually uh, we've done some documentaries. And, and one of the questions we ask the officials there, how do you judge your fight? I was right. really on the edge of my seat personally when they were answering. And they said they don't. <laughs> no, They're they only refs. That. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm mean, sorry, sorry. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, you know, ask the judges how how are how, how, how these, and they say you know same criteria. You know, if it's effective, if you're hurting the other guy, then you're going to be winning. You know, yep. and I think there are a lot of people here who would like to think that well, no, it's all about style and 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 kicks. Yeah. Don't don't count as much as punches. And I mean, yeah. I, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but. But the but the judges of Lumpany and Rajon Nern, I've heard it for myself. I know what I know. That, yep. You know they said it, and look, the guy who's hurting the other guy more is the guy who's going to win the round. And and I I hundred percent agree with that. All all of these people, there's so many people that I know that are higher up in the sport that are like, well, they don't judge it like that in this in the stadium. And I just roll my eyes like, uh, you know, you, you know who wins a fight? The guy who's hitting the guy harder, you know, mm, and hit, hitting the guy it. more. I mean, well, I mean, look, fight, fighting transcends culture, right? I mean, it's, there's a reason why it's popular in Thailand, in the U.S., in Europe. You know, everywhere has a form of fighting, right? I mean, yep, yeah, everywhere. It's part of the human condition. And, um, and so, you know, what's the commonality, right? It's imposing your one guy, imposing his will on another, or one woman. Absolutely. Imposing her will on another. That too. And so how is that best reflected? It's, uh, who's, who's throwing the harder shots? Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I, I don't like that. Well, there's a difference in scoring. No, there isn't. That guy won or that guy won. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's close rounds that could go to either way. But most of the time, you know who won, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, good, there's the, the degree of subjectivity. Uh, and it's hard to get away from. Uh, but that's only kind of at the higher level or really close. Fight. Yeah, like really super close. Then, yeah, you don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. No, 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 not at all. I mean, we could talk about this these questions as long as we as long as you want to. Um, so the next question is 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 what in this life would you like to accomplish? Hmm. What? So a goal. Uh, what would I like to accomplish? That's pretty deep. I got you, man. I got you. Yeah, it's deep. I didn't. I didn't see that one coming. Um, yeah. Uh, I would say I'd like to really just raise confident, happy, you know, grounded, well-intentioned, successful children. <laughs> I mean, that to me is, uh, you know, on a personal level. And then, you know, uh, kind of for me, uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to do some good in the world. I'd like to do more good in the world. I, you know, I'm not even sure what that looks like just yet. Well, but, um, well, listen, by thoughts. by raising good kids, you are doing good in the world, man. I appreciate that. I mean, for sure. And 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 people that do care that much about their kids usually do raise great kids, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. Yeah, but I, I but I think if we're all if we're all honest, really honest with ourselves, you know, we, we can do that and somehow find the bandwidth to do more. I mean, you know, sometimes I'll do a, a 
the, the, the screen time on my phone. And I'll look during the course of a week, well, how much time did I spend on this or that? Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's not something I'm going to be very proud of. And so then that's kind of like, oh, you know, what if I spent three hours doing, I don't know what, something, working towards a goal? Um, you know, I don't know what, what that is, helping other people. So Man, yeah, that's, that's, says that's busy, great. They're, they're, busy, they're busy, but really it's a combination of a, a big workload, but also a lot of distractions. A lot of distractions, man. I Nowadays, I couldn't even imagine not looking at my phone every 10 seconds or two, two, two minutes, you know what I mean? And it's like, man, throw your phone down and do something, you know? And and I do the same thing. Yeah, I just, I mean, I mean I'll occasionally, you know, what I'll do with Facebook and Instagram is I'll, I'll, I'll load them up, I'll take a look at it, and then I delete it off my phone as quickly as I can. Yeah. Otherwise it'll, it's just a black hole. It is, man. And then... You know what I, I do with that screen time? I do the same as you. I look at it and I try to beat my record every week. You know what I mean? My record of how little I was on my phone, not how much I was on my phone, you know? Sure, sure. I, I try to. Um, all right, the next, the next question is, uh, what about this business do you hate? I mean, you've been doing it for 20, how long have you been promoting shows? 23, 21? Three 21? years. 21 years? years, 23 years. There's got to be like the main thing that you're like, God, I hate it. Um, <clears throat> what do I, what do I hate? I mean, hate, nothing like, nothing comes to mind that like elicits that kind of feeling, but I can tell you something that I'm, I find a, a struggle with this, you know, for many years. You know, I didn't I didn't graduate from a fancy college right and I didn't work I don't have a, a resume that you know, that worked at you know ING or the UFC or a bunch yeah. of you know, kind of impressive places um, and you know I guess you know owning a boxing gym put yep. a, <laughs> Things that have a relatively low barrier for entry compared to guys who have fancy degrees or, or you know, or SVP that they're, you know, company. So for many years, I, I would feel a little insecure, a little unsure. I mean, they must be smarter than me. They must know something I don't know. Um, but I would have to say something I really cannot, I have a hard time with reconciling is a lack of, uh, you know, sincerity, a lack of um, just disingenuous people. I have a hard time with that. And I wouldn't say that's this. I wouldn't say that that's specific to this industry. Yeah, I don't I think so either. Say, I would actually say it's less common in this industry than I agree. others, but it is something that uh, does pop its head up, and that's probably something I have a hard time with. Like, you know, I, you know, people who are not part of this industry, you know, think of us as you know, brutes or uncultivated, uh, uncultivated and thugs, and, and yeah, but, I know. But the fact is, we have a disagreement. It's too small a community. We have to work it out because you're going to be here and I'm going to be here. And, yep. and we may not like what the other guy's putting down, but we have to work it out because yeah. our world is too small. We don't have a choice. And we're used to, you know, real, like, seeing fights. So you know, very few people are tough guys because everybody, <laughs> everybody here has, has gotten their ass kicked at some point yeah. or another. So, For sure. So, you know, I think we're, you know, we kind of cut to the quick and, and, and figure it out and are able to check our egos, you know, aside probably faster than other other places. Um, I agree with that. Uh, other industries. Um, so because of that, I have a real hard time when it came to come up across someone who, you know, is not too straight. Yeah, you're, you're right. I, I, I have the same same problem. And, and it's these people that, that just lie about everything or they're not like a mm. and you're just like man you just said this yesterday and, and they lie the way out of that and then i'm just like i don't want to talk to that guy anymore you know mm. yeah <laughs> but, yeah I, I, I don't get it because you know he's you know and i deal with coaches all the time and and they've been they you know every coach or manager has been burned you know more times than they care to remember and i always <laughs> excuse me and i see them in there and I dealt sometimes I'll deal with a coach for the first time 
and I'm like, oh, you got to pay me up front. So you gotta, and he's, he's comes to me with his guard up. I get it. Yeah. And I think to myself, my God, if I stick to one person once, like, no. how do you, how do you, not that I would want to, but how do you do that in the age of the internet, in the internet and still survive? And there are guys um, who you and I both know who do it. And somehow coaches still show up and they put guys on their show. Like, you know, Man, I don't like get it dead. either. And I have to be quiet because if, if I say something, you know, then you're no then you're to, the asshole. Yeah, I'm the, yeah. So I just yeah. You know, oh, you're working with that guy. Well, good luck. Wow. Yeah. You know, when I first came here, um, Houston is notorious for that. There was a guy. Um, uh, his name is Rudy Cisneros. Oh, well, anyways, he 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 ripped up ripped off a bunch of people out here, and I'm I'm I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this twenty something years as well. I, I figured it out before we went to the show and, and I called him out on it, you know, and, 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 um, he still does it. He rips people off and people still sign up to sign up for his shows. And, and we all put it out there like, look, this guy is just rips people off. Why are you doing it? Why do you, you're helping him? Uh, it's died down since then though. We have, we have a couple of good promoters out here, but I'm good at catching on the bullshit, man. <laughs> Look, there are a couple of guys who stiff people here and there, and I, you know, occasionally someone who maybe, you know, you're in this industry for a while, say, oh, I'm working with so and so. I say, well, I might want to get paid your travel up front there. Yeah, for Stuff sure. Like for sure. Yeah. Well, at least at least you have that good outlook on it, and you're not like, you know, a lot of promoters like, oh, you work with him, well, you could never work with me again. Man, I hate that, dude. I- it's too small. It's too, uh, too small an industry to have that attitude, you know. Just, For uh, sure. No, it doesn't work. So, next question is, what in this life do you love? What do I love? Yep. Man, I, I, I have to say, I'm just, I don't know if the kind of age where I'm at, I just have a, a, a bigger, greater level of gratitude, you know, especially right now with what we're going through, healthy, um, you know, got a roof over my head, I'm not really worried about my next meal, and that's all. That's that's a lot to be grateful for. What do I love? My, you know, my family. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really fortunate to, um, up until this point, have, have you know, and I keep plan on continuing have a, a really full life. I've seen a lot, and I've had a lot of ups and downs, and you know, we just, uh, yeah, just, just I just have a lot to be grateful for. So, um, what do I love? I don't know. It's, that's a good I'm answer, dude. What do you mean? That, that that's a great answer. I'll take that. Uh, okay. What do you mean? Uh, you don't know. You just you just explained it. I mean, you love life. You have a gratitude for life and the life that you've created for yourself and your family. I'll take that. That's good. Yeah. That's a good answer. I, love gar- I, I, I have a garden uh, in my in my uh, in my backyard. I love yeah. That. Yeah. You're gardening. Yeah. Are are you growing food? I am. Yeah, I am. Believe me, I, I'm spending, I think everybody's got a garden spend a little more attention to it this year than they have previously. So, <laughs> Learn, yeah. Learning how to grow food. That's right. You yeah, know, I trained um, I trained Matt Brown for, I think, seven of his fights. And in Ohio, he, he had a big garden. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, look, man, I'm going to learn how to grow food because if anything happens, I'm going to know how to grow food. He has a yeah. big yard. and he had food growing back there. He was learning how to do it. I was like, all right. It's the most, it's, it's, it's funny because, um, uh, my, uh, member of the family was playing armchair psychologist saying, you know, yeah. it's so funny. You know, you're organizing these fights and you know, you're dealing with all these rough characters and, you know, and here you are, you know, put around in your garden plants, spinach and kale. And that's right. And, uh, I said, yeah, I just, I don't know why, but it feels good. And, they, and, and someone said, you know, you know, on one hand, you're kind of you're organizing these fights and this kind of level of chaos and the organized chaos and destruction. And here's this other side where you're kind of nurturing these yep. things. And I got to tell you, like, you know, I'm, I'm not a big drinker, you know, not that I judge it, but it's just not, never been my thing. Uh, or, or, or smoking pot or anything. It's not really for me. But me I neither. Go in that garden. I tried yoga, I tried everything, nothing really does it. I go in that garden and I just put my hands in the dirt and. I'm, I'm good. Man, I'm good. that's awesome. So it's like yeah. it's like meditation. Um, it's there's nothing like it, Mark. All right, all right, yeah, man. I that's you, great. I encourage you to, to think about it. Man, I don't have land, not yet. I'm working on it. I, yeah, I have you a, get a community plot somewhere. Yeah, I have a plan. Though. I have a plan. Um, a couple years, okay. I'm gonna have 
Uh, All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the country. I'm sick of the city too. So I have okay. a plan. That's that's I'm talking about myself. We talk about you right now. So the next question is is most people um, they just they just go nothing really. And, and, and by knowing you for so many years, you'll probably say the same. But the uh, what in this life do you hate? Wait, calm down. Uh, so the next question is, what in this life do you hate? What in this life do I hate? Yeah. Uh, what the, I, got, I don't have an answer. Really? Yeah, I don't. I'll take I don't, that. I like that. I don't. I don't really hang on to anything like that. You know. Man, I need yeah. to learn that. You know, I like. Listen, you know, I, there's a graveyard that's on on the, the main road by my house. I can drive by and I have to stop by it uh, right before the stoplight before I turn uh, down to a road to go to my house. And uh, it's an old one and the graves are from the 1600s. And I think to myself, like, think about all the time that those people spent irritated or agitated about something. And yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so I like that. I'm, I'm it not doesn't. saying I can't. I'm not saying I can't be. You know, I'm not saying I walk around <laughs> with, a, with a halo over my head, but you know, kind of walking around with a chip on my shoulder, like, because that's a that's a lens that you're gonna look. You know, you look through life with that lens, and it's not good. Yeah, and the results aren't good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great outlook, man. That is a great outlook. Cause I, I do it way too much. I'm too angry. At, and then I'm like, for what? Like later you reflect back and I'm saying, what the hell was I that mad about? Nothing. You know what I mean? About nothing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, I'm not saying I can't walk around. And then, and then sometimes, you know, on the other hand, it's like, you can't get mad at yourself for feeling something. Right. I mean, cause it, it cause like there's all this stuff going on in the back of our brains that we don't even know, you know, we're not always in tune with what's driving us. And, right. And, Sometimes, like, I'll, I'll pissed off about something, and I'll say, you know what? Like, I'm going to let myself, I'm going to stew in this. I'm going to enjoy being pissed off about this. <laughs> At least myself. you're aware. At least yeah, you're aware of exactly, it. And you're not so exactly. raging yeah, that you're like, you know, fuck. Because then, then if you try to stuff it down, then it's going to kind of pop out some other way, like whack a ball. So you just embrace it. Like, all right, this thing's pissed me off, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to mourn it. I'm going to just, you know, wallow <laughs> it for a day or two. I'm going to give myself that time. But then when it's up, i got to move on. <laughs> all right hey man that that's also good like like you're aware that okay i'm mad so fuck it i'm gonna stay mad and i'm gonna fucking just i'm gonna embrace this shit and <laughs> that's exactly. awesome just double down on it <laughs> you know when i get that angry i have a bunch of fighters and, and you know they can all beat me up i'm old and so but i'm like y'all glove up and <laughs> and then I, I i box and i feel better you know i mean i really get hit and i feel better you know um that that's my outlet. That's how I try to do. It. I got you. Yeah. So so what what's your favorite saying? Like like if if somebody that knew you for a long time, like he's always like, uh, all right, all right, all right, or something. What what's your favorite saying? You know. Uh, um. What's my favorite saying? Well, I'm gonna say something that's kind of cheesy, but it's true. Maybe I should ask your son. He'd be like, dude, he says this every day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we could ask him. Uh, I would say. Uh, I say go big or go home. Go big or go home. All right. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. And and you mean it too. I do. All right. Okay. I, do. I like that. So so if you didn't do what you did now, let's say you took another path down in life and you didn't do what you did now, what profession would you do? It's like just me knowing what I know now. It's just like me. Is this... Justin now talking to like twenty year old Justin saying do this. Well, yeah, that 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 is a good point. Um, but what profession would you want to do if you didn't do what you did right now? I don't know if I had the discipline to do it at the time, but I, I like my son asked me. He's like, what, okay. you know, "What's a good job? What's what? What should I do? What should I do?" And I always say, "Well, you know, you gotta you gotta find that for yourself. I can't, you know, I don't want you to live up to something I'm telling you." And then not be happy. Right. And he pushes me, pushes me. I said, well, I got to tell you, I think anesthesiologists have it pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, well, they make they make good money. Uh, 
They don't have an office or staff or anything like that. They kind of show up. They can work when they want. Okay. And, you know, I think it's a high stress job, but I think every job, you know, has a, you know very degrees of stress, and you got to worry about paying your your bills next month. I mean, you know, everybody's got something. Right. Uh, so I think uh, I think you know if I could you know, if I was going to rewrite the script, knowing what I know now, I'd probably say anesthesiologist. Like anesthesiologist. Yeah. Wow, I w- man, I, I would have never thought that. Anesthesiologist, yeah. okay, wow. Listen, they, they, they can work three or four days. Have you ever, ask yourself this, have you ever met an anesthesiologist that isn't happy? <laughs> Good point. They all laugh when I was cracking jokes before they did surgery on me. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> they made the bread and they, they're out. As long as they woke you up, their job is done. Yeah, as, as long as you, you live through that part, then yeah, their job's done. You're right. Exactly. So that leads me to my next question. The next question is, what what profession would you never, no matter what, you would never do that? Banker. What's that? Banker. Banker. You know, being a finance guy. Oh, the boredom of numbers and counting every day, all day, huh? Well, I also think it's just soul eating. I think it's like, you know, uh, you know a friend of mine who was, who's in it, he, he describes it, he's like, you know, you're a monkey and you got your, you put your hand through this hole and all the bananas are there and you grab the banana and you can't get your hand out of the hole, but you don't want to let the banana go. And like, that's, <laughs> that's sort of, sort of like, it's kind of like, just stuck in this, 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 you know, it's just, I, I feel like it's kind of soul sucking. You know? Yeah. Just, they, uh, they see the world as ones and zeros and it's just, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, probably. Okay, yeah. banker. No way. No way. Yeah, I, I don't know what... That that would be a hard one for me to answer, too. Office work. I would have mm-hmm. to get out, you know? A uh, banker would be bad, too. You know? Mm-hmm. But, anyways, that was a good answer. No banker, but anesthesiologist. Yes, you ever met a... You ever met a unhappy anesthesiologist? Yeah. They're generally pretty happy. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, so uh, when it's all said and done, your life is over, everything's done. How would you like for people to remember you? Um, I hope I brought value to more than half of the people I interacted with, whether that be you know, just support at the gym, encouraging them to work a little harder or, you know, you know, I, I hope that people, uh, I'm remembering someone who, um, yeah, was mindful of, uh, of other people's needs and, and respectful of that. Okay. I'll take that. That, that, that's a great answer. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and you are, I mean, in my eyes, you're my friend, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I want to be remembered as, as somebody that helped a bunch of people, but there's a bunch of people that hate me too. But you know what? Jimmy crack corn, you know? So, but you know, but you want to, but you want to know what? <laughs> and I can't say, you know, I can't say I'm Mr. Popular um, in every single circle I've been in as well. But I think when I started to, and it's harder, and it's not an easy thing to do, but when you approach those people with your ego aside, truly curious about how you are experienced, you know, that can be a real catalyst for growth. Yeah, yeah. Man, you, you're always dropping this knowledge on me, man. You make me smarter just by talking to you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, likewise. And, you know, for people that don't know, I've, I've known Justin for a long time, uh, had interactions with my fighters uh, through the years. Uh, he sent me books um, that, that he, he thinks I should read. And, and the books are great. Every, every book that he sent to me, I mean, it really pertains to me. And, and man, uh, uh, he, he's a super nice guy. He, he promotes fights. That's how I know him. And he just was my friend and sends me stuff, you know? And I was like, wow, this promoter is sending me stuff. This, this guy's awesome, you know? I mean, but promoter, now he's my friend, but yeah. So that's cool, dude. Hey, man, you know, I really appreciate you coming on uh, even during this 
crisis that the whole world is in. And, and I appreciate uh, your opinion and, and the things that you were doing for our sport. And, uh, and it's a great thing, man. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank, thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, you know, a lot of your perspective and, you, you know, you keep it real all the time. And, I do. And, <laughs> and, you do. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's one of the things I like about you. One of the many qualities. Hey, so, man, um, uh, you, you have websites? What's your website? Oh, boy. Uh, FridayNightFights.com, uh, uh, um, uh I'm on Instagram, still quick. Uh, it's me, uh, still S T I L L quick with a K. Um, okay. That's me. Okay, cool. Um, again, thanks, man. And um, that's it, dude. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. And, and, and I'll see you on the next Friday Night Fights, which hopefully uh, we can get some people on that show. Yeah. We'd love that. You know? We'd love, love to have it. it. All right. Thanks, man. All right. You take care. That's cool. That's awesome, man. So I tried to put you on the spot on a couple things, you know, yeah, you with, <laughs> with, you know, uh, that's why I didn't want to tell you what I was going to say. That's okay, man. That's but, but I, I mean, you answered it. You answered it right. You know, you didn't, if, if something that you didn't want everybody to know, whoever watches this, you know, not a lot of people watch it yet, but they will. I mean, it, it's building, but yeah, you did. It was good, man. It was cool. That's okay, man. But I don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why I do it. Cause I want to ask the questions that people are like, dude, don't ask him that. And I'm like, I'm gonna fucking ask him. If he doesn't want to answer it, he won't fucking answer it. You know, that's who cares? All, it's, it's all good, man. No, 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 no problem, man. So, uh, so how many of these do you have in the can so far? Well, I have I have three done, and then I had two more lined up. I had uh, Raymond Daniels, and then I had Matt Brown. Uh, you know, I know Matt Brown, but they were coming around this side of the world. And and then this happened, so uh, this one will be four. Do you want me to get you Mike Swick? Oh, Mike Swick? Now, yeah, I'd like to get Mike Swick, dude, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I can, I, you know, I'll reach out to him. I'll tell him uh, I did the podcast, see if he'd be interested. Yeah, where do you know him from? As long as, as long as you agree to pump up his AKA Thailand, Jim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Of course. Yeah, then he'll do it. <laughs>